Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room as, as usual here on this channel. If you'd ever like to see more than just this corner behind me, which needs to be dusted, the ironing board and then the blue table I use my for my pattern drafting, if you ever want to see more of this room than that, I do actually have a sewing room tour video. Some people have asked for a tour of this room before and I actually have done one before at its most clean and organized state, which is definitely, definitely not in right right now. Um, so I'll put a card up to that sewing room tour if you'd like to see more than just this corner behind me. But today I'm going to be making something a little bit differently than I normally do here on the channel. Normally you see me pattern drafting sort of from scratch using my basic blocks, making a pattern and then using that to make something new. But today I'm going to be taking a destroyed garment, a retro dress. It's actually a 1940s style dress, but that was made in the 80s in France that I bought in the UK and it died the first time I wore it. So a destroyed dress that I'm going to go ahead and take apart, make a pattern out of the destroyed remnants and like the Frankenstein bits, make a new pattern out of it, use that pattern to make a whole new dress as a copy of the, the one that was, that came before and is now sadly very gone. So I won't really be starting from scratch today, but we'll be starting from a garment and ending with a garment. But let's go ahead and jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. All right, so I have this sad remnant of a dress as you can see, the skirt has been cut off of it. That's because the skirt was damaged and the zipper was broken. And so this dress was kind of falling apart on me. Um, I bought this vintage at, I, th I think a Beyond Retro. I don't know, I think that's the name of the shop in Brighton, England actually. But this is a um, 1980s dress. You can see in here the label somewhere by Cami. Seems to be possibly French, um, but this is a like an 80s does 40s dress here um, in like a rayon chalet and I'm going to be copying this dress and making it or well it's not a dress anymore but copying this bodice adding a skirt on um, and making another 80 does, 80s does 40s style dress in again a rayon chalet this time this rayon chalet that I've had in my stash for a very long time um, this fabric has been waiting to become something for ages so I think I'm going to be making this copying this pattern from this piece here. I'm gonna take this apart, trace everything, and make it, make it new in this fabric. So that should look a little bit like this. Um, this is what this bodice looks like in a more like flat, um, flat pattern, what am I looking for? Tech sketch, <laughs> couldn't find the word technical sketch in my brain. Um, almost in more of a tech sketch-ish way, I'm trying to figure out exactly what's going on here. We have our little gathered rouging here in the front, however, on the back, of this midriff section it is smooth so that's what I'll be doing as well and then up here we have an all-in-one sleeve um, you've heard me call them kimono sleeves as well sometimes that's what they're referred to as although they have nothing again to do with Japanese kimono really um, but this like kind of all-in-one sleeve here um, this just is also part of the side seam is where the hem is and I really like how this looks on so um, it's something I would like to play with a little bit more and it's got some gathering up here along the shoulder again on the front but not on the back it comes up quite high in the back it's almost got a shawl collar situation going on up here so that's that'll be interesting for me we have a v-neck here on the front as well this is all finished with a facing and the back again is quite high up like on the top of the neck here you can see this zipper that is in here it wasn't even sewn very nicely maybe it was a replaced zipper that broke even um there is some gathering here at the top of this back bodice section area this uh inside here there's like a loose knit interfacing along the waist portion here um, with this, this little tuck even, I guess, just to add some extra stability. Um, of course, all this is sewn with a serger or overlocker um, because it was, again, made in the 1980s, not in the 1940s. Even though it has a 1940s look about it, this has a facing that kind of comes halfway down the back here, which, all right, sure. Um, I don't really know why. I don't really know why you would do that. But, you know, I, I've seen things like that before, I guess, but just seems... A bit odd, honestly. Maybe it adds more structure to the shoulder as well, which, you know, in the 80s would have been an important thing. It's a shame because I really quite like this fabric. Um, I wish this... I mean, I'm sure this dress was very cute. I got to wear it w once <laughs> I, uh, after I bought it. I think I wore it once that summer after I bought it. I bought this when I was studying abroad in the UK and I took myself to Brighton for the weekend to see it because I had obviously never been to Brighton before. And I remember a few things about that trip. I was all by myself and I remember eating alone in an Italian restaurant um, and having a nice evening by myself. However, I forgot to bring my pajama pants and my hairbrush, I believe, on that trip. 
So, you know, that was an interesting time. Um, but I wore this once after I bought it when on that trip to Brighton. I wore it in Pisa, actually. And this zipper split open while I was on an open top tour bus in Pisa, Italy. So, you know, that's my lasting memory of this dress. Is it the zipper breaking on me while I was out and about in and roasting, honestly, in Pisa in July. So um, we went and got some pizza in Pisa and that made me feel better. But I'm going to go ahead and unfortunately take this all apart here. Of course, I could use this for something else possibly, depending on how big the pieces are. Um, I'm going to take this all apart unpack all the stitching and then I will come back to you and show you how I'm going to go about tracing all these pieces to make a copy of the dress that was in a new nice rayon chalet. Okay, have I mentioned on this channel before how much I hate <laughs> unpicking things and using a seam ripper? I feel like I have, but uh, you know. So I've left half of this intact. This is, We're looking at the inside of the front here. This is the back. I've left half of it all the same because it's mirrored and then I will be able to reference this if I'm wondering how something was put together or how much something was gathered, etc, etc. So the other half, however, is now taken apart. So these little lining pieces go on to these midriff pieces. So we have the bodice front top and the back, uh, the top of the back, and then these little midriff pieces that go underneath. Um, as you can see, this is a good guide for like what this is supposed to be gathered down into, but this piece is much wider because it has all that rouging and gathering that was in there. So I'm going to go ahead and take all these pieces. You can see that collar was done back there. All that jazz. Um, I'm going to take these pieces and I'm going to iron them, press them. I did put some markings so I don't get lost here on some of these. But I'm going to go ahead and press all this as flat as I can and then I will get out some alphanumeric paper and I can start tracing these and marking them. And then I will have to, of course, um, mark some other things on there, like um, how, like how much this is gathered, where the gathering starts, like it's smooth for like a half inch in the front, and then the gathering, and then it's smooth again at the waist, things like that. So I'll put all those relevant markings on there as well. But first, to the ironing board. All right, now everything is pressed. You can see how much wider this rouged front piece is than the like uh, inner lining, and even how much smaller it is this because this gets gathered down into that um, so you can start to see how this goes together even now that I've pulled it all apart um, but now the challenge is to go ahead and take all these pieces lay them on top of paper here and go ahead and start tracing these so this uh, I tried pressing this but this fabric just starts to curl if you press it so I'm kind of imagining if this was laying nicely out where that would be I'm putting it here and so I'm tracing out what that would be, you know, imagining this is folded down. So I have that extra little bit of space there. Um, and then, you know, the seam allowance is a little bit narrower than like my normal half inch seam allowance. So I'm giving, gonna give myself a little bit of wiggle room at the top and bottom, anywhere there's seam allowance really. Um, and even on this dress, I tried on this bodice and held it as close as I could. And the only fit modification I wanted to make to it was along the side seam here. This front panel was like weirdly like forward. It was a little bit too short across the front. Um, so I'm just gonna add on an additional like quarter of an inch along this side area of this just because it was a little short. Um, the front was a little small, but the back kind of fit fine. So, or like it would fit fine if the front was at the correct place and the side seam would sit better. So that's the only fit modification I'm gonna make to this, but I'm go gonna go ahead and trace this piece, trace this piece trace these. Um, this is just the same, so I'm just going to have to trace this piece once, and I'll use it for both the inner lining and fashion fabric, and then of course I have to trace the back and the front. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and lay these out just like this on my alphanumeric paper, and go ahead and trace them down. So what I'm doing here, basically, I've got my first piece done here, and this is the back midriff here. So I'll put this on here. This is the center back. Um, this seems a little bit curved. I doubt it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be gathered or anything. It's supposed to be smooth. So I'm sure this is supposed to be a straight line because the center back is rarely ever bowed. <clears throat> um, so I'm just kind of correcting that, going off a straight line here. And you can see this, I'm coming up, I'm making the line kind of thick and coming up a little bit above this. That's just because the seam allowance is thinner than mine. So I just want to have a little bit of cushion around there. This here too, this kind of curves, that probably is part of this pattern of this dress. 
But if I wanna, again, add a little bit more into the width of the waist for comfort's sake, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and square off that little bit of curve there to give me a little bit more room in that waist area at the side seam. And again, kind of thickening this line down here just so that I have, A, a smooth line, and B, just a little bit extra because the seam allowance is a bit thin on this. So that's what I'm gonna do for all of these pieces. So here's the front piece here, and I've just gone ahead and traced this. I've also marked where this was interfaced on here, um, just for future reference. I don't think I actually have any interfacing, so I don't think I'll be able to do anything anything for my dress here, but I will look around and see if I have any left anywhere, hopefully, in stock somewhere. I've also put this little line here. This is a mark where this, because this is like is a facing that's all cut in one, so I've put a mark on this where that folds over, because that becomes the front neckline and this gets sewn to the other side. Um, so this is like a facing without having to sew a facing on, it's just all in one piece. Um, so I've just drawn a little line to indicate where that happens. Um, up here, I've just you know kind of smoothed the line a little bit more. Out here along the sleeve is a situation. Um, this is just turned with like a tiny little double hem, the edge of the sleeve opening here. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I've just squared this off from the side seam. Just drawn a line up, made it a little bit more of a right angle here at the top where it meets the shoulder. And so when this side seam gets sewn, this section gets sewn to the back, um, and this you know seam allowance gets folded in that half inch, this will also kind of naturally want to fold in that half inch. I will have that, e have that edge surged already, so I will just turn it over its surging twice Hopefully I'll be able to show you this during the sewing portion and you will understand what I mean, but that is just why I'm kind of squaring this off and then rounding it up here so that it's not a complete point. Um, but hopefully you'll see what I mean in the sewing portion of this. Goodness, hopefully the sewing portion of this goes well, who knows? Um, so here's the front. All I have to do now is trace the back. All right, so I've traced my back as well here. And what I've gone and done is, which I can kind of still tell on this piece, but I've looked at the side that I didn't take apart and noticed where the gathering is on all the different sections that have gathering. Um, for the back here, the only thing is just a little bit of gathering at the waist, where there might normally be a dart, you know, um, but they have a little bit of gathering in here. So what I've just done is marked this point here and marked this point here. So I know that this area here needs to gather a little bit in order to fit into the midriff piece that will be sewn on here eventually. Um, so that is that. I think this one was constructed the top, back, and front together, and then all the midriff pieces together, and then the midriff sewn to the top, and then the skirt sewn to the midriff as well, and then the zipper put in. The other thing I did for this back piece was to add on an additional eighth of an inch back here, just because this has half inch seam allowances, and I usually use five eighths along the center back for my zippers, so that's what I have in there. And this piece kind of gets faced again by itself on the front. Um, if you look at the part of the one that's still intact here, if you ignore this larger facing down here, which I'm not going to bother to do, sorry, um, this is that front piece. It sews on, and then the extension, this little bit here, sews. Uh, that kind of becomes like a almost a mandarin collar in the back, or like a small, like a priest collar, whatever this is called. A short little standing collar in the back, um, which just gets self-faced again along the zipper area. So that is the plan there. Um, so using this and having taken it apart both as a guide, I will be able to sew the new version together. I will go ahead and set aside these pieces now I have them all traced, and I can go ahead and cut them out of my fabric and get started here. I was luckily able to find some fusible interfacing that I had left around, just the last few scraps of it, honestly. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and interface the back midriff. I cut two of these, or rather four of these, 
So two for the outside, two for the like interfacing kind of layer that the original dress had. Um, so I'll just use the shally for both of those layers and I'm just gonna flatline it the way they did. But I want to add interfacing to one of those cuts pieces, um, the inner one. And then I'll put interfacing on the front inner midriff piece as well. Again, this is the one that the larger piece gets gathered onto. Um, so this is kind of like giving the fit and the other one will have the rouging on it. Um, so I cut interfacing for both of those. And I did find a tiny bit more of this like super lightweight fusible that I will cut and use for that same um, area of interfacing that they had on the front of the other dress. Okay, so I have all of my pieces prepped in whatever I need, way I need them to be. Um, I have whatever is interfaced, interfaced. These are the front midriff pieces here, for example. Um, I have the center front sort of fold back facings interfaced now, and I th have everything surged, um, the raw edges of everything. So I can go ahead and start sewing things. So now normally you would have like the interfacing showing on the inside, but I feel like since this is going to cover this piece, I should put the interfacing on the inside, that way the inside of the dress Hopefully this makes sense. <laughs> Sandwich the interfacing in between the top layer and the inner layer so that this shows on the inside because then it'll be a little bit prettier. Goodness, I hope that makes sense. At the end of the day, I could be losing it. <laughs> um, but these are the gathered midriff pieces. Now you will have noticed perhaps that I never really make things in this style. I don't really like high... well I guess I like high-waisted things, but I don't like empire-waisted things, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, I very rarely make anything with an empire waist or something that has the separate waist piece like this under the bust. Um, but just because I had bought that dress and I know I like the fit of it on me, I feel confident that I will like this. Um, I'm trying to branch out a little bit more and see if I just have a weird stigma against this style for some reason. So we're drawing it today. This fabric has been waiting to be used forever anyway, so goodness. And this very, very busy floral will hide most sins, you know, if I end up not really liking the style, the style lines are going to be totally lost in this busy print anyway, so sorry about that, but we're using what we have in the stash, you know. I'm going to be stash busting a lot over the next year. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, the first thing I have to do, I think, for sewing all of this is I'm going to be putting gathering stitching along the center of this, which gets sewn down here, and then along the sides of this as well, and I think I'm going to just tack those onto this. Maybe, should I baste them on? I'll baste them on with big stitch lengths. That way when this back piece gets sewn at the waist here, gets sewn at the waist seam, this gathered section will be encompassed in that. So hopefully that makes some sense. Um, but basically the first thing I have to do here is put gathering into these panels to gather them down, put them on top of these ones to create that front section. Now because I'm not familiar with making things like this and I don't usually use rouged or the gathered sections or midriffy things like this. Um, I'm not really sure whether I should gather each this and this, put them down to here and then sew that seam, or if I should just sew these two things together, gather that, sew these two things together and sew that on top of here. <laughs> what do I want to do? I think I'll make each of these Put them on each of these and then sew the center seam. That's what I'm going to do. Whether or not that is, uh, you know, strictly correct, I don't know. But that's just how I'm going to do it. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to put um, basting length stitches, basically the largest stitch, largest stitch length on my machine. Largest stitch. Mm -mm, go ahead and try it. Largest stitch. Largest stitch. Uh-huh, sure. Um, I'm going to do two lines of stitching here, 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 and here. So I can gather these little portions down, stick them on top of here, make the gathering look all nice, and then also the center seam. Okay, that's the plan. Okay, so I've got my lines of gathering stitching along the sides of those pieces, and I've pulled these ones in, and then pinned it down, you know, along the side, on this side here. Um, so that's how that is. I'm just spacing out the gathering in between there and keeping it kind of flat at the very top and very bottom where it will be sewn to the skirt down here into the bodice up here. Don't worry, we'll talk about the skirt later, by the way, because we haven't even talked about the pattern for that yet, but I'll, I'll get to that after we make the bodice. Um, so I just have that pinned down along top of this piece here, and I will pull the threads also for this side and gather that down to fit on here and interspace the gathering evenly. All right, so now you can see what that looks like all gathered down on each side to that piece that's underneath. It's just pinned on there, basically. I am going to go ahead and just baste this along 
the sides as well. There'll be a lot of thread to remove after this. That's why I've just gone with pink and yellow threads because um, all of this is, you know, holding stuff into place that necessarily doesn't have to. Um, so I'll be able to remove some of these threads afterwards if they show. And it's easier to do that if they're a color that isn't blending in perfectly. As if this was black thread, it would be harder to remove those basting stitches afterwards because I'd be like digging for them, you know? Um, I like to have it be a contrast if it's something I'm going to remove later. So that is what this piece now looks like. I will go ahead and baste that, baste that. But of course I have to do the other one first as well. And those will be my front midriff pieces and then I can sew them along the center front. Not exactly sure where I left off here, um, but here <laughs> they look so funny. Uh, this eventually will be sewn along to here as well, and I think it fits in there. I mean, I'm just following the pattern of that dress, you know. I <laughs> they made it work, so I assume it will work in the end. But this is the front. Obviously, this is the inside. Um, the gathering is on the outside there um, of the midriff, or this is the entire midriff really. Um, this is the side seam, center front side seam. And then these are the backs, the two pieces here. One is interfaced, this inner piece is, um, and then they're just basted with a long stitch together, um, but they're like kind of flat line like that. Of course, I have my seams pressed open here. Um, they are a little bit bulky because it has all that gathering in there, but that's okay. It'll provide us nice structure at the waistline of this thing. So I put the little midriff together, and then I'm gonna sew the bodice to that, um, but I have to make the bodice first, or like the top of the bodice, I guess. So here are the backs. What I have to do first to prep these before I can sew the backs to the front um, and then do the kind of collar situation up here, which will be fun, um, is I have to transfer the markings that I put in for where the gathering was on this dress. So again, I had left that one side of the dress all intact so that I could measure where the gathering was on that. And I marked that on this pattern. So I just went ahead and put pins on my fabric here and I will put those two lines of gathering stitches between these two areas. Um, I can just leave that there for now. I just prefer to do this while this is flat. Um, so I will have to also do this in a couple areas on the front of this dress as well, or this bodice. So on the front, I have some gathering that goes up in the shoulder. So again, mark these points onto my fabric. And then I have gathering down here at the waist as well. So put two lines of stitches in, two lines of stitches in. Again, you don't backstitch or anything. You just leave the ends free because you're gonna need them free and long because you're gonna need them to pull so you can gather that section into where it needs to be and gather this section into where it needs to be. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put all that gathering stitching in and then I will come back to you. Okay, so now we're looking at the fronts here and I'll just show you the areas where those stitching is in. As you can see, about a quarter of an inch in and then about a quarter of an inch away from that, I have two lines of again, basting stitching in yellow and pink here because I will pull these threads out later once the garment is all sewn together. Um, but they're just the largest stitch length, no back stitching, just between those two pins, the areas that were marked in my pattern because of the dress. Um, so I will, you know, eventually pull on these threads to close this into gathering and intersperse the gathering, like spread out the gathering in between this spot, pulling this entire area down so that it will fit onto actually this front of the bodice here. But in order to, before I can put this bodice onto the midriff, I have to sew the two sides of the bodice together. Now, these little extensions up here form the collar that it wraps around the back of the neck on this. And uh, that's because again, this is like an extension facing. So this gets folded. If you see this little notch here, that matches up with the corner over here. So that will eventually be like this. And this small little collar area gets sewn to the backs. So we'll get to that in a minute. But before I do that, before I can sew the shoulder seam and that collar area, I want to sew the center fronts of this together um, because that helps me know where to fold this over down here. So this area here, 
get sewn to this. So I'm going to put these right sides together and sew with that half inch seam allowance, oops, sorry, along here. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up perfectly, pin this area together just through here basically, and then I'll go ahead and stitch that at my half inch seam allowance, a little bit of back stitching up here and at the end, but especially up here so that that end of the v-neck eventually will stay in place of course. So I'm just gonna put that little line of stitching in here and then press that seam open and come back and show you. All right, so here's the center front stitched together now. I of course can press this apart, but I'm gonna go ahead and press these little facings over at the same time. So again, lining up where that little notch is out there. I'm gonna go ahead and press this open and these down essentially. I'll show you over on the pressing table before I hit that with the iron. All right, so here's that center front seam pressed open, and then this side is pressed down. This is gonna be my front V-neck, and this is, becomes its own facing here. So here's the other side. I'm just gonna do the exact same thing, line that up up here, line this edge up along there, and go ahead and press that side down as well. Now my bodice fronts look like this. I have my kind of front collar area down. I actually might just put a pin on each side just to hold that while I keep going. The next thing I'm going to do actually is, well, do I want to do the side seams first or the shoulder seams first? Interessant. Let's do the side seams first. So again, there's no, this is just a straight line right now. There's no indication where the sleeve opening is and begins and where the side seam starts. So I'm going to take this back over to that table, lay the pattern back on top of it, and mark where the sleeve underarm is. So if I lay the pattern on top of this piece again, again, we can see I had my gathering stitches in between these two lines. Um, same with up there. And here, this is where the original sleeve kind of scooped in like this, and I left it a straight line for reasons that will hopefully soon work out for me and will become evident. So this is where that sleeve ended. So I'm going to go ahead and put a pin in here, kind of one-handed, um, where that mark is. And that way I know to sew this distance um, on the fronts here to one of the backs here. Um, so I'll put one of these right sides together and line that up and then sew the side seams together. Same with on this side. So here I am over on the machine again, ready to sew those side seams I was just talking about with my regular half inch seam allowance and a shorter stitch length as usual. You'll notice that for actually sewing the seams here, I've now switched over to having black thread, whereas for anything that I was basting earlier, I was using a brighter color of thread. I'm just gonna press open those side seams and use this opportunity also to press the like half inch along the top of the sleeve there as well, um, because the side seam and the sleeve edge are all in one, it's all one straight line. So I just pressed the seam allowance for each open while I was there. But I'm going to turn this whole piece over and I'm going to go ahead and pin the shoulder seams and I for some reason didn't film a clip of this on my phone so at least I decided to film it with the big camera. I was having an interesting filming day this day to be honest everyone. You know eventually the lockdown becomes uh, there, there are good weeks and there are bad weeks and uh, when I was making this dress it was one of the um the, the bad weeks, lads. Um, so I'm just going ahead and putting where that gathering along the top shoulder here is. As you can see, the gathering was already in there. I'm tying off one side here so I can make sure my gathering doesn't escape on me. But I'm just going to gather that down so that the the piece on top here that you're seeing, the reverse of, that I have sitting on top here, of course, right sides together always, these are the shoulders. So the front is underneath and the back is on the top here. So I'm just gathering that down so that it will match and I'm making sure the little neck area is going to match too. I actually went back on over to the table to look at that piece, the half of the dress that I still had intact, to make sure that I <laughs> kind of had an idea of what I was doing here and that I was going to be putting this together correctly because I haven't done a collar like this in a long, long time. But essentially, I just have to sew the shoulder seams first. So I have, so I have the gathering pulled down to the correct size here so that this seam is the same length on the front and the back, essentially. I can mean, go ahead and pin all along the shoulder seam here, being careful over that area of gathering that's on the front underneath here, making sure I have that pulled down so it's evenly spaced gathering. I even throw a little bit of steam in there just to make it behave. And then I will pivot and sew the rest of the back 
there's like a curve, do you see that little curve scoop out of the back where my hand was just then? Um, that gets sewn to the straight edge of the collar piece from the front. Um, it's an interesting way this pattern is done. I really quite like it. It's easier than any other kind of shawlish color I've ever done before, really enough. But I'm just going to go ahead and sew up into that little corner there. And then I left the needle down, pivoted, and pulled that curved edge along the straight edge. I totally can't believe I didn't film more of this. Oop, I have an email. Um, I can't believe I didn't film more of this, but I guess I was in a weird mood that day. All right, so here we are back over on the machine about to do what I was just talking about. You can see where this uh, open edge of the sleeve there is got like a fold in it from my ironing it open earlier. That will come in handy later. Here I am just stitching along the shoulder seam down towards the neckline edge where I will be able to attach the back to that little collar extension coming on round from the front. Um, and I'm just making sure my gathering isn't doing anything strange here. My pins aren't doing anything strange here. Yes, again, as always, I will mention that I sew over my pins. I know I am a rebel. Um, but, you know, some of us are rebellious. I did just put a little bit of back stitching in here just to uh, enforce this little area. And then I had to figure out how to pivot so that I could pin the straight edge of the front extension to the curved edge of the back here. So that is what I am playing with here. I'm just trying to reason my way around it while I'm already halfway through, making sure that will be the correct length and will match up and all of that jazz. So here I am just investigating and thinking too hard about this, honestly. Just thinking, wait a minute, do I know what I'm doing? Do I sew this to one layer or two? Two? What? What? I can't, mm. <laughs> you know, lots of thinking going on here. I, I In the end, I decided to sew it to one layer, just the top layer here, um, not both layers of the collar at once. And then I decided I would tack down the other piece, like the facing-ish side inside later. So here I am, again, pivoting and just sewing from the corner out to the end of the little collar area. Hopefully without messing anything up or getting anything else bunched in there, you know? Okay, so I want to explain a little bit how this ends up working. So that little extended piece from the front of the bodice here gets sewn to the curve along the back here. Now, inside is this going to be the prettiest thing ever. Um, so this is the bodice piece here. That gets clipped in the corner. There's a little extra corner that's hanging out right now. I could possibly clip this, but I don't think I'm going to bother. Um, from the back neck piece. Um, but hopefully you saw in how I was doing it around the machine, I sewed the shoulder seam, left the needle down, turned this area so that I could line up this strip with this curve, and then slow and slowed, slowed, sewed the two together, um, leaving actually the um, like fold over facing free. And then now that that is sewn together, it like has a bit of a standing collar effect wrapping around the back of the neck of the garment here. Um, this has a little bit of a puckering situation here, just because I didn't do it perfectly. Um, this is the first time I've sewn a shawlish collar in a long time, but I actually think it's working quite well. Um, this side sits actually a little bit smoother, um, so this side is nicer, even though, funny enough, this is the side I did not clip. Um, and I did look inside the old dress as well, the side that I still have together, and it is clipped on that dress. Um, so I assume it is, like most corners in life, supposed to be clipped, but for whatever reason this one's lying smoothly. Um, whatever, you know, the chalet, rayon chalet is a wily fabric. It's doing whatever it wants to, and if it wants to lie smooth, I'm not going to complain. Um, I have pressed this shoulder seam open and not this one, so I'll go ahead and press that open as well. And then, of course, I will have to sew this onto that midriff piece. Here's a view inside again. Here's the center front. Here's that fold over facing, that like weird strip that we had. So again, the shoulder where that gathering was, shoulder seam is all sewn. Leave the needle down, pivot, and I sewed that little strip to the back curved edge of the neck. So that is how that goes together. Of course, I ironed this in earlier, so that is how that goes and I can go ahead and kind of pin this down. I'll probably tack this here at the shoulder because there's all this extra stuff to tack it to um, and then this gets eventually 
turn into the zipper. So the zipper is going to go back here. And so I'll finish that bit in the back when I'm doing the zipper um, and hand stitch it down. But this is the, you know, finished front neckline here. We have this V and it's the same on either side. Um, so that is how that goes together. It's actually easier than I thought it was going to be and quite nice. So hopefully it looks nice when I have this on later as well. Um, you'll remember I have my gathering stitches in the front and also in the back. So I need to pull those in to make them fit properly. So I have pulled the gathering stitching in here along the front and just kind of spread those gathers out. I tied off one side, pulled it down to what size I needed, checked it against this midriff to see that I had the right size. That's checking the center front seam matches the center front seam on this guy and the side seam, etc. Um, so I have that pulled down and then I just tied it off again on the other side as well. And then I can move those gathers around without worrying that that size will increase. Um, so now I know that this to here will match up from this to here. And I did the same with the back, pulled those gathering stitches in to the size it needs to be. So now I can take this midriff piece and lay it on top of my bodice. This is right sides together. And then pin it, of course, first at this side seam and then also at the center front here and pin all along that. And then I will be able to sew the bodice to the midriff. Um, of course, I've only done one side so far. So after I do that side, then I can pin all along that midriff seam and sew the two together. Okay, so midriff is on. We're having such such fun. <clears throat> uh, I, I'm ready to go back to my simple projects in cotton. Um, so to finish, this is an armhole, just so you know where we're at. This is the side seam. To finish the arm opening here, I have it pressed, you know, that same seam allowance, and I'm just folding it twice around that uh, surging. Couldn't find the word surging. So I'm just folding that surging in basically where it's open up here. So that's where that side seam ends and the kind of sleeve begins. So I'm just tucking that in and I will go ahead and stitch along here. I'm going to go ahead and hand sew this down. Um, so I'll just hand sew all around this to hem my sleeves essentially. Um, and then the bodice of this will be done and I have to put the skirt on. So I'll talk about that in a moment after I've hemmed these sleeves. All right, so there this is what that finished sleeve opening now looks like. Just has that little hem turned in there, hand stitched down, and of course that's virtually invisible from the outside. You'd have to be looking real close <laughs> to see that. Um, and inside, it just looks like this. It kind of just transitions into the side seam. No problemo. So now the bodice of this copy is done. So basically I have what I began with, the bodice of this dress, but I have to of course put a skirt onto it. And for that, I only have a little bit of fabric left. So let me show you what I'm going to do. So as much as I would like to do an A-line shaped skirt on this, I didn't have enough fabric to cut an A-line skirt. So what I did have enough fabric to do was this. And I do think I've done this on the channel here before, but if you imagine this is your like bolt of fabric here, it's 45 inches wide. These are the salvages. I cut a piece well, I take a snip into the fabric. I usually snip off at the start a few inches in and tear the fabric if it's like this of Raylan Shelley that you can tear. Um, and it will tear along the like uh, grain line. Well, not the grain line, the cross grain. It'll tear along the cross grain. So you'll have a perfectly straight edge. And then if you measure 29 inches down, which is how long I want my skirt to be, 29 inches, so I measured 29 inches down. I made another little, another little snip. <laughs> I can't talk anymore. I made another little snip into the fabric and then I used that snip to again, tear all along the cross grain so that I have a piece of fabric that is perfectly squared as far as grain goes. Um, but it's just a rectangle of fabric that is 45 inches wide by 29 inches. And then I will use this 45 inches as the like circumference, I guess, of my skirt. So I will have 45 inches across. That is what I will gather down to my waist, which is about 31 on this dress. I think this dress is a little roomy. So, um, well, a little roomy on me, depending on 
you know, how many tacos I had that day. But um, I'm going to just put a little bit of gathering in certain areas along this skirt, which I will show you. Um, and then I'll have a nice straight edge along the bottom here to hem. And it's just going to be a straight skirt on this. Again, I would like to do, you know, perhaps an A-line. Most 1940s things seem to have A-line shaped skirts. But when you don't have enough fabric, this is a good solution. If you only have like about a yard of fabric left, you can always do a little straight skirt like this. It won't have a lot of flow in the bottom like this drawing does, but it will work. So to put gathering in my rectangle fabric here, along the center front, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of gathering just there along the center front area. And then I'm just going to do some small sections of gathering near the center back, which is what this will become. Um, I'm just going to put some stitching, I don't know, maybe 10 inches along the center front, so five inches on either side kind of, but all in one, and gather this down a little bit so that it fits, and then do a little bit of gathering in the back, probably maybe two inches out from the center back edge. I'll put in about three or four inches of stitching, and then gather that down to fit whatever I need to do. Um, again, I will show you when I'm pinning this onto the bodice how I do that, and then I will just sew the skirt onto the bodice, and then all I'll have left to do is the zipper and the hem. All right, I lied. So here's my skirt piece. And about three inches in from the back, maybe four, I didn't actually measure. I am eyeballing all of this. I put in a about a six inch section of gathering there. I did the same mirrored on the center back on the other side. And then for the center front, instead of doing it all in one, I will leave, this is the center front right here. I will leave a about a four inch section to on either side of the center front blank and then I'll put gathering next to it so I put about maybe eight inches here and on the other side so I'm going to put two lines of gathering stitching here two lines of gathering stitching here two lines of gathering stitching there and all the way on the other side two lines of gathering stitching there so those are going to be my little sections of gathering on this to help it fit down into the waist of that midriff piece of the bodice Okay, so here I have the skirt all gathered down and pinned to the bodice, which is underneath here, right sides together. So I have that small section of gathering, kind of where a dart would be on a skirt on the back. Then it's a bit smooth here. Then I have the section of gathering across the front, a bit smooth during the center front, over the center front here. Again, more gathering, smooth along part of the back again, and then a little gathering over the back again here, and then smooth center back again. So that's just how I like to do these quick little skirts. Sometimes I pleat them, sometimes I gather them. Depends. Because this dress has a lot of gathering going on, I wanted to keep that going and just keep the theme essentially here. Um, you can see the skirt at top edge, by the way, I did serge just so that I don't have to worry about that fraying at all. So now I can go ahead and sew this rectangle, now a skirt, onto the bodice here, and then it'll be a dress finally, as opposed to just a floating sad bodice. Okay, the skirt is on. So here's that seam between the skirt and the midriff here. Of course, this isn't, you know, the most elegant way of putting this kind of thing together, actually. Um, kind of having this midriff lining be sewn separately and then sewn on top of all of this, encompassing all the extra seam allowance, is how I would kind of normally make these things. But it's kind of just going off of how the uh, original 80s version of this was made. And this is how it was done. Um, if I was using like a nice silk crepe or like a really nice fabric that I meant, meant a lot to me or something, or was making a very fine item, I probably would do it differently. But because this is just like a an expensive rayon chalet, and I'm kind of just testing to see if I can copy that dress the way I've tried to here, um, I'm not too fussed about it being done this way. I was just kind of copying, again, the way the 80s dress, the way the 80s dress was done. Um, using my serger and my straight stitch as opposed to an overlock uh, machine like the other one was sewn with. So I'm approximated as much as I can, but I probably would do this differently the next time I make this, basically. That's what I'm saying. Um, this is kind of like a wearable muslin, really. Well, she says wearable, but we're still hoping it's wearable. Because um, I do like this print, even though it is just a cheap sale rayon shelly. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and put the zipper into this. I'm not going to show you how. If you would like to see how I do my zippers in my other videos on this channel, I have shown before, but I do, just don't feel like repeating myself tonight. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put my zipper in. Again, on the bottom of the skirt, it is just 
torn, which is why it's kind of eyelashed like this. It's because this edge is a torn edge as opposed to a cut edge, which means while it is perfectly straight, it is a little bit messy. Um, some fabrics tear nicer than others do. This one gets a little bit distressed, not much. But because it's a straight edge along the bottom there, I will be able to just turn this up and again, about an inch probably is what I'm going to go ahead and do on that and then iron that into place and then just um, blind hem stitch this down or probably like what is it long and short uh, slip stitch is what I normally do go ahead and hem this by hand after I iron it um, so I'm going to go ahead and put the zipper in and do the hem off of camera I hope you will forgive me again this isn't really a tutorial this dress it's just kind of a dress making diary here not nice dress making but <laughs> a interesting uh, idea to copy this dress which is just something I've never done before so hopefully you don't mind this is a, a messier one if you want to see some of my nicer sewing uh, here's my playlist where you can see me cut different corners you know and after putting in the zipper and doing a quick hem on this one this dress was all finished and here is what it looks like on me with a quick black sandal thrown on here back on set so you can see there's not a lot of movement in the skirt just because it is a bit narrower but I find that these little under a yard skirts work well when I'm running low on fabric you can see how the back comes up high in the back high at the neck the back comes up high in the back yes that was a great sentence the back comes up higher on the neck but the like rouge section here gets quite lost in the print but that's all right here it is with some ivory accessories my little wooden and plastic beaded bag here some ivory sandals from bait footwear and a vintage straw hat and then a carved celluloid bracelet here um, I do have dress clips that match this bracelet so pinning on one of those on the v-neck could be nice as well so here it is with ivory of course there's a ton of colors going on in this print I could pair this with yellow accessories I don't have any of this kind of coral color but that could be fun here it is with black straw with a black crocheted glove a straw hat straw handbag and again those suede shoes so here's what it looks like with black accessories of course the black background in the floral means you can always pair this kind of thing with black I don't have this sort of soft sagey almost army green color in this print I don't have that color accessory so a whole new color of accessory for me to start collecting and uh, I do love collecting accessories but here it is again with black this time with black patent leather shoes a plastiflex handbag a little tilted straw hat and then purple gloves I really would uh, love to have purple shoes as well um, and possibly like some purple flowers to pin on like a purple flower corsage here I think would be nice but I don't quite have uh, I guess I don't have sage green accessories or a full set of purple accessories yet but hopefully one day hopefully you enjoy this dress I'm certainly happy with how it came out so that is how I would go about copying a semi-destroyed dress uh, taking something apart making a pattern from it and then making something anew of course you can make patterns out of things without having to take them apart, without having them have been destroyed or destroying them further. It is possible. It's not something I have done before. Um, it sounds a little fiddly to me. I usually would love, I usually like starting from scratch, but this time I just happened to have this bodice shoved away in a dark corner of my sewing room and I really do need to organize this place. Let me know if you'd like to watch me do that. I know some people like watching organization videos and this place could sure use it but at least now that bodice isn't sitting forgotten anymore and has become something new again that I can wear in my wardrobe. Thank you all as always for tuning in today and I will see you again here real soon. Bye!